The Oscar race for Best Picture is heating up, and Pete Hammond from Deadline Hollywood, Tom O'Neill from Gold Derby, we're tracking the contenders, and we think we know what's out front. Pete, let's start with the predictions of the Gold Derby experts. Yeah. 20-some uh, pundits from the top media like Variety, uh, Yahoo, uh, Entertainment Weekly say it's Spotlight. Let's start there. What do you think? Well, I think those are all journalists, and the movie makes <laughs> journalists look just like, you know, angels coming down from the sky. Uh, it's a terrific movie. But it is the best thing, the best commercial for journalists that we've had in a long time. And look, the profession is being tried now. You know, newspapers are going under. So this is really an interesting kind of period piece in a weird way when investigative journalism uh, really was strong and meant something. And, uh, and, and these people are heroic in what they brought out and the changes that have been made in Spotlight, which is a, a terrific film. It really is. But let's not get overboard here. <laughs> I agree it, with you, Pete. It's I agree. It's just, you know, opening, right. and we're going to have other audiences that aren't filled with press people right, right. Uh, seeing the movie, and we hope that they'll uh, respond to it the same way all the journalists have. Now, if this movie didn't play with journalists, it'd be in real big trouble. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I think it has some of the hallmarks of a Best Picture winner, like it feels important, but it doesn't have the overdue director component. Not that that's always necessary. The other problem is that uh, it's, it is journalist-centric, but what that could pay off to mean is that if it wins those critics awards, those early, those early critics awards like New York and LA, that could pull a Hurt Locker effect. Yeah. Possibly. You know what's so interesting about this, and I, I've done a few Q&As with Tom McCarthy, who directed and co-wrote it with Josh Singer, uh, the other co-writer, and the last two movies that these guys made, you know, the critics pounced on, and now they're their new best friends. <laughs> I mean, remember Cobbler, the Adam Sandler movie, and that was Tom McCarthy's previous film before this, uh, even though he's done some great movies like The Visitor. Um, and then uh, Josh Singer's was The Fifth Estate, which, which critics Ooh. just you know, vilified. Right. And so it's so interesting to see how you can just have a turn and all of a sudden you're an Oscar front runner and the favorite for all the critics awards. The biggest story in the best picture race right now is that The Martian has taken off like a yeah. rocket. Exactly. 30 days ago, Pete, it wasn't even in our top 10 among the experts <laughs> charts. Now it's number three and you think, Maybe it's this year's gravity. It certainly looks like it, doesn't it? I definitely think it is. I think this movie has really taken off like that rocket that got them up to Mars. And I'll tell you, uh, Ridley Scott is a big part of the reason. Uh, Ridley Scott has never won an Oscar, right. even though he's directed an Oscar-winning Best Picture in Gladiator, but that was when he wasn't producing his own pictures, and so he didn't get that Oscar. He went to Steven Soderbergh for Traffic, and so oh, he's holding yeah. that crucial Oscar IOU right now. And as you say, he's both a producer and he is a, a director. He's worked with everybody in Hollywood. They right. love this guy. They love him. He just got a star on the Walk of Fame. Uh, he's, he's doing everything right. They're really out there with him at everything, making sure 20th Century Fox, which I don't think they felt this was their biggest, strongest contender. They had, you know, have The Revenant coming and Joy coming, and those were the things you heard. And then The Martian they thought would be a nice big commercial hit. Instead, it's also turned out to be a critical hit, an audience hit, and an Oscar voter hit, and they love it. I've talked to many, many people that like it. I do think it's this year's Gravity. It's lighter than Gravity, but it's a kind of movie that makes Hollywood look good because in tough times, it's brought in the audience at the box office and also uh, brought in critical acclaim. The big question is the sci-fi element. We know that they don't like sci-fi yes. at the Oscars. They didn't put in Interstellar last year. Right. The last sci-fi movie to get in was Inception. And then there's this other sci-fi movie this year called Star Wars yes. coming up. Yeah. So do you think it, we could see one of those years where, where they're going to only put in one Star Wars, in other words, one sci-fi movie, or could they both get in like 2009 when Avatar and District 9 both got in? Right. I remember 1977 when Star Wars was nominated for Best Picture and Close Encounters was nominated for like nine Oscars, not right. Best Picture. But, I mean, they really dominated that year, and uh, Star Wars won seven Academy Awards, so that's the one time it's really scored there. No one's seen the picture yet. I don't know. It's huge, obviously. It may be too huge for Academy taste. Let's not forget, this is the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences we're talking about. They have been going for small things in recent years. I mean, the last two Best Picture winners 
Birdman, 12 Years a Slave, of course, The Hurt Locker against Avatar showed you the way they think and uh, in picking Hurt Locker. So I, I, I don't know that you know we'll see uh, two science fiction movies, but I don't think they look at The Martian that way. I think The Martian's a very human yes, film. Yes, I agree. And, um, and, and so I, I think it's, even though it's in the sci-fi genre, I don't think it's considered that. Four of our uh, pundits at Gold Derby say it will win, including Tim Gray of Variety, Ann Thompson from IndieWire, Nicole Sperling from Entertainment Weekly, and Sasha Stone from Awards Daily. So yeah. those are pretty smart people. We can't discount the fact that it could go all the way, or it does what Gravity did, which was get 10 nominations, seven wins, but not those top wins, except that, for uh, Quaron got in for Best yeah. Director. That could be. I just have a feeling there's a thing for Ridley Scott this year. Yes, and I, uh, I think the time has come for him. So no matter what happens, and we still have yet to see a, a few uh, major pictures but uh, that could upset the apple cart. But I do think this movie it has got it all going on right now. And as you say, it wasn't even in the ball game uh, a month ago. That's the Oscars for you. Yeah, it really is. Joy is number two, and uh, part of and I'm I'm one of the people who say it's going to win, and part of me says, well, look, it's got all the hallmarks. It's uh, it's the work of an overdue director, David O. Russell, who's been nominated for all of his last three films. It has heart. You know, the King's Speech beat the Social Network because it had an aching heart, and this does, and. It's about the American dream as seen from the view of, of a disenfranchised element, women, who, you know, who, who hits the jackpot in the United States. I, I think it's got all of those things going, but what it's missing is it doesn't feel important. It's not 12 Years of Slave. It's not that we need to add here. We haven't seen it yet. It's one of those three films, the three major contenders that we uh, pundits haven't seen yet, along with Hateful Eight. Oh, wait, you haven't seen Joy? You certainly sound like you have, Tom <laughs> O'Neill. In my mind, I, mean, I probably have. My God, have. it's got heart, it's got soul, it's hilarious, it's the great direction. Has heart and soul. I mean, you just gave them a rave review for a movie you haven't seen, which is my point here. We haven't seen Joy. I talked to Jim Giannopoulos, who's the head of 20th Century Fox, and uh, it's not done yet, and uh, but he's almost done. He says, you know, but they've been testing it, and you know we'll see. But I, I I'm going to wait until I see the picture to proclaim it, um, you know, number two or number one on these charts uh, that I don't jump into until I've seen everything. Because well, I remember a lot of movies that we talked about like this over the years, you know, right, right, right. like The Majestic and Angela's Ashes and other movies and The Shipping News. All of those were going to be Best Picture winners too until. We actually we saw them. We actually saw them, but we should say in defense of Gold Derby, which part of the fun is being wrong. Part of the fun is looking. <laughs> no, 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 I, Pete, really, I mean that. Yeah. Looking back to see the stupid, boneheaded things we said last year. Last year, everyone said, oh, it's boyhood, all the way. Oh, that's and funny. then, of course, Birdman pulled ahead. But two years ago, we had 12 Years a Slave nailed right when the film festivals came out. And, of course, we wrote it all the way through, although Gravity really, really gave it a run near right. the end, end there. Um, that said, let's keep going down the list here. The Revenant. I just don't think this is a best picture. It just, it, it, we haven't seen it, okay. But I uh, have talked to people who have seen it. That okay. one, at least uh, I know uh, people so who have seen it. They love it. They said it's phenomenal. First of all, it's Chivo, you know, Emmanuel Lubezki is, has shot it, and it's an extraordinarily different uh, looking kind of film. And the uh, work that went into it is just as challenging as Birdman was in Gravity. He may win three years in a row. Uh, although I have to say, Roger Deakins, who's been nominated about oh, wow. 600 times right. and never won. Sicario is extraordinary work. Uh, Roger, I'm pulling for you. Um, but uh, I do think he could win again with this, and they say the movie's phenomenal. Now, it's very violent. It's very about long. two and a half hours. Um, it's very dark. Um, Leonardo DiCaprio is in it to win it too. You know, here's a guy that lost five times. comes up every year and tries to win, and I hear he's phenomenal in the film, as is uh, Tom Hardy in supporting. Um, so that's what I hear. Again, I haven't seen the picture yet, but boy, filmmakers, uh, this looks like a real filmmaker movie, and this could appeal, but it may not appeal to the entire Academy, and particularly right. the older people. It's about a, it's older about a guy you know, it's, I know. for hours and hours trudging across the snow to get revenge on his butt. I mean, I find that hard to believe that that's a Best Picture winner. I know. I hope I'm wrong. Yeah, you may be. Steve Jobs is my favorite movie. I've, it'd be a first. No. <laughs> Steve Jobs is my favorite yes. movie of the year, and we're seeing it go down the charts, and I think that's foolish because uh, I, I agree. people are saying, oh, look, it, it didn't meet expectations at the box office. Well, the box office Office, uh, as you and I know, f tracking this industry, um, it was positioned all wrong. It rolled out to 2,500 theaters when Birdman, by comparison, just last year rolled out to 850, and that was much more sensible. Right. 
So yeah. it's not a failure as a film. No, no, it's it's actually a very good film, and it played very well with the Academy. You know, it got an A minus cinema score even from audiences that went to see it. The mistake here uh, was it, it's from a major studio, and they know how to release big movies, big wide releases. Right, so right. they 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 opened it really well, the top independent opening. I mean, the top um, limited opening of the year, uh, but. When it went wide, it just collapsed. And in second weekend wide, it really collapsed. It felt like a horror film fall, 64%. Well, the title's terrible. It, it, yes. it, it, they didn't call the social network uh, Mark, Hup what's his name, Zuckerberg, right? No. They did, they did, they did, so why are they calling this thing? And plus we had an Ashton Kutcher movie called Jobs to confuse <laughs> the thing. And you right, know, right, this right. movie is not gonna gross that much more than Jobs did, which is like, everybody's going like, oh my God, how could this happen? Um, but I think it's a, a problem Oscar wise only in the sense that they went out so wide so fast they're not using that great uh, distribution pattern that the Weinstein company has done for years and Fox Searchlight and things as you mentioned. With the platforming. The platforming but keeping it only in a few hundred theaters up until right, Oscar right, nominations right, 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 tops right. and that's when you that's when you go with these pictures. But then again, this is from a major studio and this is what they do. And this isn't the first film this has happened to this year. It's happened over and over. It happened with The Walk, a terrific movie um, that just, they made the wrong uh, moves uh, when they opened it in IMAX and it never recovered. Let's go through the rest of the list really quick. Number six, Carol. I mean, I could see it maybe getting nominated for best picture. It's not on my list. I think it's a movie that's gonna to appeal to the uh, below the line groups, okay. uh, costumes. Okay. Beautiful uh, art direction design, costumes, and, okay. cinematography. I buy all that. All of that is really good, and that can help it get into the best picture race as well. And of course, the actors, it's a real actors movie. Number seven is a, a film that everybody is under over underestimating, I should say, and that's Bridge of Spies. Yeah, well, Steven I don't know Spielberg, why. I don't know why either, because he, Spielberg got War Horse in there a couple yeah. years ago. Nobody okay. liked that. Okay, and he's been nominated 10 times for directing. He's right. won twice. Um, but this movie is beloved by the Academy. They, it, they've they really been eating and it, it up. All of their buddies are in the crafts across the board, so it's got yes. a, a wide uh, a Very support. strong movie, very strong performance by Tom Hanks. Uh, you know, I think uh, it's the, one of the few adult you know, oriented movies, it's actually doing well at the box office well. too. And so I think it's gonna play and play through. And uh, I would definitely count Bridge of Spies in the best picture race without question. Hateful Eight uh, was very high ranked on our list uh, a few weeks ago. It's, it's falling down while other movies are getting attention, but it's still really in the race, isn't it? I think that Quentin Tarantino could have won Best Picture with Inglorious Bastards a few years ago if the race had just been a few more weeks. Hurt Locker yeah. was losing steam. There were scandals around it, remember? Yeah. And there were parties for Quentin all over town. Yeah. He really is an overdue director. Yes, he is, but, you know, but he's won twice for uh, writing, right. so he's not overdue for Oscars. Right. Uh, this movie is, I've heard, because I haven't seen this one yet, but three hours and mostly with set. an intermission for the yeah, roadshow. With an intermission oh, for you know God. he's doing it like a roadshow. I love you, Quentin. <laughs> Seventy millimeter film. You're my guy. Um, but um, you know the thing is, it's three hours <laughs> I know, and I set know. basically on one set. So I don't know. And plus he's been very controversial lately uh, with all of these uh, kind of anti-police uh, uh, controversies going on, swirling around him. Oh, it's only, it only helps him. Yeah. Brooklyn is really doing well with Academy members. Yes. They love this movie. Yes, so do and, you I. Know, and I do too. But it's a movie that you could easily underestimate because it's so quiet and it's just so... And, and, and w films from a female point of view don't often do well, but this movie is doing extremely well with the Academy. It's a gorgeous movie it's a beautiful movie and Saoirse Ronan is it's just a perfection uh, here's the thing you know with this and the movie Carol that you brought up um, Brooklyn is set in 1952 about a young woman living in New York working in a depart department store who finds love Carol is set in 1952 about a young woman <laughs> in New York working in a department store who finds love. <laughs> I mean, okay, it's okay. like one or the other, but both? I don't know, but I would guess that Brooklyn may have the upper hand because uh, like you, I've been hearing nothing but glowing things. I mean, I've had Academy voters, particularly older ones, 
come up to me and just like unsolicited talk about this film. It's really registering much the way one other little movie is registering Room. Yes. Um, the same way. They are blown away by this little film Room, uh, which I think will definitely get in the Best Picture race. Actually, I jumped over it on our list. It's number eight. And it really is the little indie, uh, like Whiplash last year, mm -hmm. that, that uh, was a small production that just everyone felt passionately about. Yeah. And Room took off at the film festivals. And we know that uh, she's a uh, well, she's the front runner and, a, and or the very, very serious. Brie Larson. Yes, uh, yes. Likely winner of Best Actress. But uh, I think it's a lock to get in, don't you? Oh yeah, I do too. And you know, they're keeping it very small right now, you know, and just going out slowly and waiting to cash in on those Oscar nominations and awards uh, buzz uh, when, when it starts happening and hopefully some critics awards too. But I do think Brie Larson is out front in the uh, lead actress race as well she probably should be, but there's so many good actresses this year. Um, it's really a strong year for best actress, not just among the young ones like her, but the older veterans too. Um, but I do think room, and I also think uh, eight year old, nine years now, nine year old um, uh, Jake Tremblay, Jacob Tremblay uh, is a, is a surefire bet for supporting actor. Really, a surefire. Bet I think he's definitely going to get nominated. Wow. However, I've talked to Academy actor members who resent the fact that a lot of these kid performances are, put in are lead, but they're put into supporting, and they feel like they're totally lead roles. But that's sort of the way it goes. And oh, Keisha Castle Hughes got nominated in lead, Again. and that surprised everybody because we, we all thought she would wind up in supporting. And so you never know. You and never know. and the actors are the ones that determine this. Okay, let's go through the rest of the list really quickly. Inside Out is, has fallen down to number eleven. It had been up there before. Before uh, higher up, Toy Story three has been nominated among the yeah. uh, and up and up have been nominated among the cartoon films. Um, uh, somebody who you both know very well, we, we both know very well, emailed me the other day and said, how could it have fallen out of the Gold Derby's top 10? Because <laughs> don't you know there are 400 members at the animation branch? Of course it's getting in there for best picture. Yeah, well, I thought that was a good argument. Yeah, actually. well, there are 1,200 members of the actors branch <laughs> and they don't <laughs> I know, love I know, animated I movies and that kind of thing, so it's very tough for them. But I think this film is beloved, has been ever since it came out. And if some of these other movies that we're waiting for fall by the wayside, then it will get in. The Danish Girl is down at 14. Danish Girl did very well at the Toronto Film Festival. It was high on our list when people saw it. I think there have been so many other uh, sexier, in a way, uh, films that have now taken the uh, uh, the attention away from it. It's fallen down. I still think it's in the hunt for Best Picture. I, still think I, I do, too. I think when the Academy sees it, and yes. most of them haven't, but I think when they do see it, I think it's a perfect Academy movie. And uh, and so I wouldn't pay too much attention. I don't think it's a critics movie. Right. And I don't. And I think we're seeing that borne out here. So I wouldn't pay attention to the early chatter on that. I think that one uh, we'll have to wait and see how that plays when it plays the Academy. But I have a feeling they're going to respond to it. One of my favorite films this year is Straight Out of Compton, and a lot of pundits are not taking it seriously as a contender. But look, we've seen African American movies do very well at the Oscars recently. Twelve Years of Slave, of course, just won. Selma got nominated last year. And, and, it, and it's a great movie about media and about the, a transformation that's taken place in the entertainment field. Do you think it can get in? I do. I, I've, I've always thought Straight Outta Compton could get in. I've talked to so many Academy members who bring up that movie right away. Now, they hadn't seen a whole lot when they kept bringing it up, but that's the one movie that resonated from the first half of the year and maybe the first nine months of the year uh, to many Academy members, particularly males. Mm -hmm. um, they have really responded to that film. I think it gets in, and I think Universal has figured that out, yes. and they put a big campaign behind it. I've got my tote bag that says straight out of deadline. <laughs> Very it. clever of them, and, yes. Uh, know. You know, and, and they're really pushing this. They've done big ads already, uh, and they have big plans for it. As well it. they should, because this is uh, uh, now an award, the Oscar, that, that rewards these little indie movies, and this was the yeah. big break. And it's like 200 million worldwide, oh, uh, you know, big hit right. domestically. It's got everything going for it, so I would be actually surprised not to see it land a Best Picture nomination. The Big Short is Paramount Pictures' acquisition late in the Derby to get in there and to be in the discussion. They were desperate to get in. They were looking for stuff. Right. At, you know, they had uh, their acquisitions team in Toronto <laughs> actively hunting for movies, and then they finally decided like, well, we've got the big short here, and I understand Adam McKay, the director, really wanted it to be in this year and promised them he could get it 
finished in time so that they could get screeners out. Because you know what happened last year with Selma, they couldn't get those screeners out in time and that, that nearly uh, killed that picture. It looks a lot like the Wolf of Wall Street. It, uh it has a, ch a shot of getting in. It looks also, though, like a big commercial film, too, in a way. Well, so. that would be the perfect storm for them. And it's got all those big name actors yeah. in it. Yeah. And I hear, you know, really great performances. Uh, I'm going to see it uh, at the AFI. And, uh, you know, Steve Carell and uh, Brad Pitt and uh, Christian Bale, I hear, is actually great. I talked to one um, exhibitor who had seen it and just was raving about it. So this is definitely Paramount's uh, best bet this year. Last film on the list is one of my favorites and it was my favorite at the Toronto Film Festival, Son of Saul. Yes. You know, sometimes these little foreign language films do get in, Amour got in, yes. even in another very depressing kind of mm -hmm. thing. But I was blown away by this movie and, I, and it's about the Holocaust. I think it, it, uh, this is a very Holocaust friendly award. Do you think it has a chance of getting in? I don't. I don't think really? for in oh, the best picture race. I, you know, I think uh, they're going to push the lead actor in a big way. Uh, I think uh, most people, for most of these, they look at them as foreign language pictures uh, that'll get in. Um, I'd be sort of surprised. I don't think there's quite enough room here uh, for a foreign picture to get in. It's a very powerful movie. But Sony Classics also has Labyrinth of Lies, which has also got a Holocaust theme to it uh, a bit. And uh, that, I know, has screened for the Academy uh, Foreign Language Committee already, as has Son of Saul. And, uh, Which that, is competing for foreign language yeah, film, too. And right. uh, that's the one, the, one, the one they're talking about to me, is Labyrinth of Law, or Lies, which is the German entry. Um, so we'll see. I think Sony Classics has put themselves in a competitive position against themselves with these two foreign films. And I, it's an embarrassment of riches for them. But uh, you know, we, we'll probably see both of them nominated for foreign language. I doubt that it'll get into the best picture race, but we'll see. You know, I, my guess is no.